Okay, so uh, I think we've waited long enough, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first item on the agenda is uh, agenda bashing. So uh, is there anything that anyone would like to discuss that is not on the agenda? I sort of stealthily added to the agenda under events if we wanted to ask if it's okay to send our invites for the meeting to SIG networking. Um, I know that there was some comment last week where there was some confusion from the travel pin guys where they had sort of you know said, hey, you know, we wish you guys would have sent this to the SIG networking list like everyone else does. Then we'd know that the meeting was here. And then I know Sergey wasn't aware of the meeting. So do we want to consider politely asking? Uh, if that's the way that they want us to communicate, then yes, by all means. It seems to be how it's done, but I'm, I'm always one before sending something that's going to spam people's calendar to sort of ask the list and say, hey, is this actually an okay thing? Yeah, I mean, if we're not sure, I mean, one of the things we could do is just ask Tim what the proper etiquette is in this scenario and before we spam a bunch of people. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do, I can take an AI to do that if folks would like. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that and then uh, just to... That way, the word we're not coming off as too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, if that's, and if that's the way that he says, yeah, add it to that, then you know, by all means. Cool. Uh, and Ed, uh, basically, I figure out what was the problem. Uh, it appeared that this meeting invite went into the Google Calendar, so I now have to check Outlook Calendar, Mac Calendar, and then Google Calendar. You know. Too many calendars. This is another good reason to 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 see if it's okay to send it to the um to the list. So I, I I feel your pain there. Okay, so is there anything else that we'd like to add to the agenda or I would like to add ask for one thing. Looking sure. at the code, there's no real getting started. You know, how, how would I go and create a new um, plugin for Network Service Mesh? Yeah, we, we haven't quite gotten to that part quite yet. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're close, right? We're, okay. we're getting there. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's definitely a but, but it's But it's still, it's still useful feedback because it, it tells us, number one, that it is uh, something that we need to, to do, and two, that there's people who are interested in it now. So. Yes, yes. Because I would start hacking something, but I'm kind of looking at it, trying to figure out where, just where to start. Okay. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about the. We lost you, Frederick. You went on mute. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so we are going to talk a little bit about. Uh, where where we're at as well, and you'll get a sense as to where um, like we we've done work that will support us in 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 that area. So yeah, I mean even just you know starting a wiki and starting just typing a few hints, and then you know people working on it, we can ask questions like I don't understand and iterate through it. That that's a that's a really good point. I mean, ease of entry into doing development work is a huge deal, and we want to be as friendly and easy in that regard as we can. Yeah, I completely agree. And the easier we are to to understand the uh, the architecture for newcomers to understand, uh, not only means that people get to work faster on it, but also means that our architecture remains simple, which means less bugs and uh, ideally more more potentially more flexibility with the type of projects it can it can handle. So, yeah, I yeah. completely completely agree. So the, this, you know, and any any help that can be given in that area as well is is definitely highly highly appreciated, you know, as, especially especially if you're looking at this from a person who's who's new to the to the code base. Uh, so, okay. So, is is there anything else that uh, that we should add in? Looks like a pretty uh, packed agenda. Cool. 
Hacked agendas are good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of good stuff today. Okay, so so first, uh, let's talk about let us talk about the results from the cumulative dot voting poll. Um, so, is Lucina on the call to talk about that since she was driving it? Uh, it doesn't appear so, but Watson's here, but I don't. No, if he yeah, had a lot to do with it. Taylor had put himself down this reporting, but I got, oh, we do have Taylor on the call. Okay, Taylor, do you want to uh, discuss? Uh, yeah, howdy y'all. I am trying to see if I can bring up the actual poll results here. <clears throat> That's a spreadsheet. So, taking a look here. It looks like we had. Are you sharing? Or. Yeah, if you can share the results on that, that'd be fantastic. And or a link to the results would also be useful. Sure. Um, We had, I think, at Watts, is Watson on also? I see you on. He's here, Watson is here. Uh, okay, hey man. Um, he may wanna speak to how cumulative voting works in general. There was a few issues on the, um, how the votes came in, but I will share them and then we'll go through that. Reset. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. So the, the voting, I th think we can, we'll be okay as far as like what the results look like. They're probably going to look a little bit funky for uh, what may be expected. Um, oops, I shot the line. I will put that back. And wow. Taylor, you're really building suspense here, man. I'm on the edge of my chair. All right. Okay. Here we go. No, don't worry. Tom is easy to put in a state of suspense. It's easy. I can sh I can share my screen as well if that. No, so could you you set it so that people can view it? Right now, I I can't view it. Yeah. Thank you. You just sent him the uh, suspend signal, and then he's in the state of suspense. <laughs> This is the problem with, with kernel guys. They're, they're ultra responsive to signals. So, um, <laughs> some of the, here's, here's the results just from the, the form that we created. And um, the, the funky thing here that you're gonna see is some of the votes came through um, where they, the actual votes, we sh it was supposed to be eight points total. And if you think of dot voting, you would take those points and put them on the time and date that you want. Um, potentially the inst original instructions didn't have enough on that. So we end up with some votes where eight was placed as yeses and zeros as noes. So some of the numbers look a little weird. It ends up should be okay with the time because it's basically the preferred times. Um, everyone else, it, it's okay. Um, I think we can do this. So it looks like this one's the. I think, this Taylor, one. I think I'm one of the offenders in the way I voted. I had I put multi. A, I I looked at it as like ranked voting. Yeah, which isn't correct apparently. So my totals might have been more than the total amount. 
Yeah, and I um, I was actually trying to go in and see if I could like turn them all into proportional, which is what um, some of these are about. Uh, so this was a proportion of the total. It just didn't work because some of the others, instead of um, being ranked like that, were literally like a proportionate amount. Um, but if I delete these, because those aren't, they didn't actually help. I mean, it, it, it's almost feeling to me, I mean, we, we, we had an interesting suggestion for this proportional voting. It almost yeah. sounds to me like we should just drop back to doing a freaking doodle poll because that shit works. And the real question is, 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 can we maximize the ability of the community to attend the meeting? And the doodle poll is literally just a, I can make it, I can't make it um, in the generic. Does that sound reasonable to folks? I, I think we end up with the same amount anyways from what we were seeing here. Um, it's still the, it's, we ended up with proportionate plus the points, so it seems to be okay. Uh, Watson, do you want to take a look and say he's, he's done a lot of the voting and calculations and could communicate how the, the dot voting would work with ranking? Yeah, it's hearing. Your audio is a little quiet. Okay, hold on. You guys hear me now? Better? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so with the cumulative voting, basically if you have a situation where you have a group and you want to, you know, like what you were saying, wait. I heard someone say wait the votes and when I was saying cumulative voting. Um, but basically, we almost had it. It was just that we needed to have some validation. It just says, hey, the maximum amount of points. You say, if you have eight points, you have eight choices, you have eight points, you have to distribute them. Put them all on one, you can spread them across. But that way, um, the people who, you know, when you have a second choice, everyone agrees on their, their second choice, it, it rises to the top. Whereas if you just do yes, no, you have situations where you have, you know, the, a majority loves one place, but they're okay with the second and um, the, the majority. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that you may be able to help me understand, and I, I, I literally don't, haven't thought it all the way through is, one yeah. of the concerns I have is if a minority really, really likes the particular day, but the majority can't make it on that day. And then you have the smearing of points across other days by the majority where there are dates that more people could make. It's just that a minority really, really like a particular day. I'm, I'm a little bit right. concerned that you would wind up with a situation where we have a day that is, you know, not actually maximizing the ability of the community to attend. Right, and and so the way it happens in real life is we we actually it doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? We actually sure. communicate. So you communicate before you put the before you put the options out, you communicate after you put the options out. You're like, ah, I like Friday, I like Saturday. It's not like you're doing it in a, in a secretive way where no one communicates. True, 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 true. Right, so cumulative voting assumes that you will communicate and you're actually trying to find out, right? It's, <laughs> and so you can, so what you're talking about, a coalition can be formed and dominate, which is like a minority, but only if everyone, you know, actually doesn't act in a democratic fashion, communicates on and trying to solve a problem because the majority will still win if you actually communicate. Exactly. So, yeah. so, I mean, it, it does look like the, the leading candidate is the current time. I do know this is kind of a brutal time, both for Israel and also for Europe, because it's basically, you know, evening Friday night for Europe. Um, it looks like the sort of second most favored time is on Tuesday, 7 to 8 a.m., um, there are two, there are four people who couldn't make that versus six people who can't make this time, right? So if you count the zeros, uh, which is kind of the thing that I'm looking at here, um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros on this time. And on Tuesday, 7 to 8 a.m., there are one, two, three, four zeros. So it does look like this time has, this time does have, oh wait, no, I was counting the wrong number of zeros. I was counting the wrong line. So Friday 8 to 9 a.m. is one, two zeros, right? So we have two people today. So it does look like today actually also maximizes the number of people who could make it. 
because I don't see any time that has fewer zeros than that. Right, and it minimizes the people that hate it. Yeah, also true, this is also true. Does anybody else have any thoughts or feelings or do we wanna just uh, continue with this time? I'm, I'm, I'm open to sort of continuing to try and figure this out. Um, or we can just say, okay, we, we've, we've done, put a lot of work into figuring this out. This does appear to be the best time. What do folks think? We could revisit the issue in a couple of months or something, you know, after anger starts to accumulate, if there is going to be any anger or feedback. That, that's also a good suggestion. Yeah, and, and yeah. membership could change over time too. So uh, that's a good reason to revisit it in a couple of months. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was going to say that as well. You can kind of yeah. see where things evolve. Right, yeah, good look, idea. I support that. It looks like the totals along the bottom pretty well uh, say what Ed just said. So they're pretty pretty accurate, even though some people well, like voted wrong. Well, and, and Watson was really good about highlighting the zeros. That helped me tremendously. I appreciate that. We could also, if when y'all are ready, whether that's for the next, um, maybe next month or a few weeks out, revote just with those three. That's also a possibility. So, shall we sort of? Does anyone have any objection to tabling it for the moment and, and you know sticking to something to pop up again in a few months and see where we stand? I think that's a uh, good idea. See you in September. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for, for you know the mechanics of the poll and presenting the data. It's it's not a trivial amount of work and it's very appreciated. You're welcome. I concur with everything Ed said. He put it way better than I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> but but if sentimentally I, that is how that is how I feel. So um, yeah, it was an interesting exercise, even how it and worked. And we out. also we also learned a lot as well. Like, we'll the next time we approach this, we'll take our learnings that we have now and apply them. Just make it clear on uh, uh, that it's accumulative and not ranked, and that and then it would even be better. Or if it, or if we decide to do ranked, make sure it's clear that it's ranked and not accumulative. It just uh, somehow I missed the message. I'm probably not the only one. Yep. That's cool. Okay. So, um, action item. Ed, did you ever get around to documenting the namespace? I, I did. And let me actually put the link to that in. Um, I, I, I did document that. Um, I would like to do, I'm probably going to go back and improve the degree to which it's documented. What I essentially did was um, I documented how you figure out from inside a pod information you can send outside the pod that will allow you to know um, what the namespace of the pod was. And there's a link to it there, and I'll stick a link into, um, I'll stick a link in here. Hang on. Uh, so that it's in the meeting minutes as well. But the, the net net is you can actually find out, you can always find out inside the pod in proc, the inode of your network namespace. And if you are in a position to be mucking with network namespaces anyway, which the NSO has to be, then you'll have access to something like var run netNS, where you can look for that inode and that gives you the name of the network namespace to work with and a file you can grab a hold of. So we, we can send, find information in the pod that we can send out of the pod that will allow us to figure out the na network namespace. Cool, and I posted the uh, link to the uh, to the wiki as well. So there's a lot of to-do items. If anyone wants to pick any to-do item up and work on it, it would be highly appreciated. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be working down them as well. Uh, and that that can be seen on the bottom of the wiki, getting a namespace from inside a pod. Yep. And. John has um, also added a uh, how to install and run the network service manager on uh, on GKE, uh, and so 
he's um, he's outlined each of the steps and what files you have to create in order to in order to kickstart it. Uh, so right now, my understanding is it should just actually may I let John talk about it. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'll, find, I'll try to find the unmute button. Um, yeah, I, there's nothing really fancy. It's just I ran it and. There's a couple of IEM things we had to we had to change or how to set. And apart from that, um, it's really just taking a snapshot of the current code and getting it to run just like it runs today on Minikube. So there's nothing that um, you know fancy. So please try if you if you need to use GKE, try it. And if you have any problems, let me know and I'll update documentation and try and help you. And, and if anybody wants to go try it on other cloud providers, uh, additional wiki pages would be awesome. Yeah, and so, something that will be useful is as um, network service manager starts to, or network service mesh starts to change and um, starts to, uh, and it, if uh, if we have people who update these documents on a regular basis, like that'll uh, that'll be very useful. Um, let's see. So review of, dev of recent development activity. So we've had a really busy uh, time in the past uh, in the past week. So the first thing was we got a couple fixes in for uh, for our create CRD. Uh, we now have device plugin support. Uh, we had a device plugin, some device plugin work, but my understanding was it was uh, incomplete. And so now we have a device plugin that, so from an architectural perspective, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, one of the things that we do is we have a set of uh, Unix sockets that uh, exist on the host. And we use the device plugin API to expose a Unix socket to the uh, to the network service manager client that uh, that that exists with the uh, CNF that you want to deploy, and so this particular uh, Unix client is allocated using the device using the device plugin uh, that is that is within Kubernetes, so. That code landed uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, we also uh, did a couple improvements to the CRD to to we have them use a single shared informer. So uh, that should that sh that should reduce the memory footprint and reduce the complexity of the um, of shuff of shuffling around different uh, different informers at this particular time. Uh, finally, we've been working on a... What's an informer, Frederick? Oh, an informer is uh, a Kubernetes construct. Uh, you can think of it as like a... Um, it, it's, it's a mixture of two things. Uh, I guess how to, that's the way to describe it. Um, it's sort of like a listener that, that emits events in Kubernetes, and it also caches events for you. A listener... So that, a listener uh, uh, what's that? A listener that sends events rather than listens for events? Well, it informs you. It, okay. it listens to the Kubernetes API and then informs you of changes. OK. So, so these are part of the Kubernetes client uh, client APIs. And uh, initially, we were creating multiple informers. Turns out that uh, we only need to create one, and, it's, and everything uh, still works. And ideally, it should, should work more, more efficiently. And the last part that we've been working on, and this is still active, is we're working on, uh, we, we had a version 1.0, or not 1.0, 0.1 of the network service, of like getting a pod to the network uh, service uh, mesh daemon. And so now that we have the, uh, the Unix socket landing, 
uh, where we can use it. We, we're revisiting the client connectivity API and iterating over it to try to work out what kind of messages can we can we send uh, to like how do we request a connection? How do we uh, how do we expose a service and uh, and interact with the network service manager? And how do we set the labels for for a given connection that we're requesting and specify the type and so on? So uh, this is probably one of the more I would argue this is one of the more important parts that we're going to be working on over um, over the next several. Uh, um, over the next several weeks. So if anyone wants to get involved with this conversation uh, and share share your experiences as to like, based upon what you know of, uh, of the domain, like why this would or would not work, that would be incredibly useful. So uh, feel free to join in on the, on the conversations there. Um, best way to join in in these particular conversations would be in two areas. One is to look at the uh, and work on the pull request that's been set up, and the second one is to hop onto IRC onto the uh, network um, uh, service mesh channel. And uh, after you read after you read it, also uh, discuss ideas, and then we'll. Take those particular ideas and uh, stick stick them as comments, comments. The, into the pull request. Yeah, um, one of the things that's probably worth noting is um, this is something that's not going to set in concrete for a little while. So you know, it's very much a how can we get shit working. So while while more feedback progressively as we go is important, don't feel like the train is leaving the station just now. That's a terrible feeling. Yeah, I completely agree with that as well. Like the, the this is going to evolve as as we get more use cases in, involved. The time when it becomes set in concrete is, and it's going to be malleable concrete to a degree, is going to be when we get to the to the one point oh point oh release, because uh, our intention is to use semantic versioning, and so uh, it. That's that's what we want to be very careful with uh, with changes, and that's not to say that we can't change it at that point, but it's with the realization that if we do change it, then people are going people who are depending on this are going to have work to do in order to ensure that they migrate because of a backwards incompatible change. So, uh, so before 1.0.0, like if you see something and you feel like this is like the wrong direction or we're missing a use case or some important detail like bring it up like you know even if we have even if we have a release date uh, I, I would rather push the release date back and get get it right ra rather than ship something that misses something big so Cool, awesome, and, and many thanks to Sergey for all the hard work he's been doing uh, on a lot of this this week. Definitely appreciate it. Sure, it's fun. Can I? Can you still hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Cool. Sorry. Okay, it doesn't look like like there's a critique that's on. So yeah, I, I pinged him in IRC, and, and he and I spoke last week. So uh, I was hoping he might be able to join. But what I suggest is we we skip this part, and if he if he uh, wakes up in IRC and sees that we pinged him, he can join in, and then we can come back to it. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Cool. So getting uh, getting started documentation and uh, and. And I added that based on our agenda bashing that we had earlier. Does anyone want to take any uh, action items to help improve this? Yes. Okay. So. Pardon me, Dan. Uh, okay. So, uh, what do you want me to write down for the action item? Well, I don't know whether I can get it all done in a week, but uh, I, I should be, 
should be able to make some progress by next week, but I just want to start. I, I want to, I stopped working on the, on anything here for a few weeks and I want to start again and start from scratch and document every step I'm, I'm doing so that others, others can keep it up. That would be massively helpful. Thank you. Fantastic. If you, if, if you document Tom, I'll try and use it. So. Okay. Yeah, and, if and, and find my uh, lies. <laughs> or, or find out where, I, where I'm just where woefully inadequate. Yes. Well, find where we have differences in the things we find obvious. Yes, that's often the case, isn't it? Assumptions that things are obvious are, are often um, the issues. Uh, based on you know, people's a priority knowledge and so on. You know, I'll just go at it from my point of view and I'll probably, and we'll see how it works out. And it's an opportunity to learn while I'm doing. And at the risk of biasing you, if you need any help with anything, let me know. Thanks, Frederick, I will. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to uh, help on that that wants to take on any action items. Okay, if not, then let's move on to the next topic. Uh, we have the intro to the CNCF, CNF project and NSM alignment. Uh, Taylor, I will hand the floor over to you. Awesome. So let's see, I was just trying to get some of that ready. Kind of spread across uh, two repositories right now. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So the actual CNF uh, project repo itself is right here. I can drop that in. Uh, where's the chat go when you are sharing? One moment here. So we have um, two main repositories on this, and the first one doesn't have a lot of info. But I'm going to give it because uh, that's where we're moving to work. Some of the similar stuff with what y'all were talking about with the wikis and everything. Um, this project is tied in with um, ONAP and let me do one more. This uh, BCP use case, which is, I can bring this up on the right screen. Also, as a question, um, so I think everyone should know what CNCF is, but it uh, would be good to describe what CNF is and what, uh, what your uh, mission is as well. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we are, and uh, Watson's on this uh, team as well. So we are part of um, the cross cloud CI team, and that's actually tied on to an action item for later as well. So that's this project here. And we helped build out the um, dashboard for the CNCF, and we're helping now on this project um, for trying to convert or port or recreate, depending on how you want to look at it, um, the VNFs, so virtual network functions, to work on Kubernetes and as containers. So that's the end goal. And what we're looking at is um, these containers here, which that's on that um, the link I gave to this wiki onap.org. So 
<clears throat> looking at the different functions like the uh, broad the broadband network gateway this vnf and the this gateway here all of those including stuff like vdhcp and dns and all of these pieces that tie together uh, this particular use case is of interest to folks like AT&T, Huawei, Orange, uh, Telecom. Um, and this implementation that we see here in this diagram is uh, the, all these network functions that are built and running on VMs and OpenStack. So, um, and this is actually a pretty old diagram and the setup was, I think, originally a little over a year ago and what we're coming in to do on this particular project and there's not a lot of info on the front page yet um, it's actually more of it some tickets that we're trying to build out but we are doing a comparison between containers running those the functionality and the the vms a lot of the work the last few months that we've been working on is trying to get up and utilize um, what the ONAP group and um, Intel and all the different folks have been working on. Um, I apologize, I, th I think you said I explained who CNCF is as well. So that's um, Cloud Native Foundation. So the foundation's interested in trying to get any software um, working as um, cloud native and containerized and portable across the different clouds. So that's kind of been our focus with the CI stuff. Um, this, this is a dashboard and focus on trying to get projects to actually work across the different clouds. And so our goals on the CNF project are to take um, these different um, VNFs and make them portable as um, CNFs containers and have um, Helm charts for installing on Kubernetes if y'all are familiar with that and make it real easy to do that potentially rebuild the actual use case to be uh, th this was originally more of a demo, so trying to get it where we could chain those different um, network functions together more easily on top of Kubernetes. And so the big interest for us is going to come in when we get to building out the use case with the interest with uh, NSM is building out the use case. So looking at how do we actually have routing work and all the other things that um, the network service mesh is trying to um, resolve for Kubernetes. So doing stuff like the DNS and authentication and building those out and making them talk is um, something that's solvable right now. It's going to be chaining these other pieces together to build out this use case. So right now our, our we've um, this originally what we were focused on was understanding what all they had and, and most of the stuff again is kind of in the projects and issues. We'll be building out the wiki and readme based on what we've been doing the last couple of months, which is really digging into the demo code that was available. Um, again, that's this tied in with this own app and a lot of it built on OpenStack and taking that apart and figuring out how all of that was working in a demo. And then taking that and we're looking at building up the a comparison between each of the different containers to their equivalent VMs for the network functions. And we've started working through this and we'll be having stuff like a vagrant file for the VMs to bring up the those VMs on KVM is what we're targeting right now and Docker files for bringing stuff up on Docker. And this is kind of our first area for testing performance and the next set will be 
where we may need to pop into the, well, there's no tickets here. I better go to milestone. It's a little bit easier. So once we're, once we're through building out each of the different ones like the VBing and all of these tests, we're planning on bringing up, we'll need to bring up Kubernetes and look at how we're going to test what are the minimal parts that we need potentially from the NSM project to get going. And then at some point we're going to be into this next section. So actually comparing how things work on Kubernetes compared to OpenStack in the actual use case. That's when we go back here. So we're going to need to set up some type of configuration, hoping that fingers crossed that we are, by the time we're at a point to set up the use case, um, there will be enough parts of the network service mesh in place that we can fit these together or start fitting it together. And that's kind of the goal. A whole lot to take in, so if y'all have any questions, we can kind of go from there. From there. So I, I think this is really cool because I, I, I could easily see something like this being a good proof of concept for NSM to apply to. Um, Absolutely. You know, because you guys have the need to do the things that NSM does or is in the process of getting to do. So it could be very cool. Yeah, and this could go down a, a couple of different ways. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to end up with a lot of contributions back to the ONAP project <clears throat> where they do management of all of these network pieces and potentially they would be, they've been working to port that, all of that software onto Kubernetes and the recent Beijing release that they just had uh, will run primarily on Kubernetes except for a couple of parts. Well, once you start dealing with all of these other network functions, they will need something like network service mesh. So I can see tying that in as one area to show off, here's what as a, a, a I don't want to say proof of concept, but somewhere where network service mesh could really help. And then I see potentially, we're kind of in the early stages of, of this build out, but potentially having a a non ONAP, maybe a clean room version of the this use case built out, that would be a really good example, what Ed was saying. And I think it was on the agenda, the, the OSS seminar that's coming up, bring that up really quick. So this is going to be talking all about um, the open source summit. This will actually be talking about a lot of these topics. So cloud native functions on Kubernetes and, and where this stuff is going. So a yeah, lot of folks I, are working on it. I would strongly encourage folks to go to that seminar at OSS. It, it looks like it's going to be awesome. And it would be great to have more NSM people in the room. Yeah, and specifically, it's the day before the conference on Tuesday. So uh, be aware of that if you're planning to to come to the work to the working group. Absolutely, it's mentioning uh, a lot of projects. It doesn't. I don't think NSM. I'm not seeing it here, but we have a lot of the other related projects um, are listed on here. So. Uh, uh, Taylor, could you please uh, post a link to the ONAP doc? I just lost it. The ONAP document you were showing. That yeah, absolutely. yes, that one. Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can. I uh, found the chat. Sure. Yeah, if we could post those on the IRC, the IRC is a little more persistent uh, than than the meeting chat. Yeah. The meeting chat's great for getting it in front of the people on the meeting. Totally agree. But if we could mirror that to the IRC channel, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I'll log back on there and post some of these links related to the CNF, including the uh, cool. sketch. Yep, cool, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This, this would also be a good place to, um, good to stick on the uh, wiki as well. Okay, cool. So I think the wiki should be editable by, uh, by everyone. And so 
and we'll try to keep it ed editable by everyone as long as possible. Um, hopefully, we won't run into any random, yeah, random idiots. The only constraint, I think, is you do have to have a GitHub account, um, which yeah. is pretty freaking reasonable. Um, other than that, you know, the, the wiki can definitely accumulate things. Sounds good. I'll I'll create a maybe a sub page about um, CNS and and where that could tie in. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, also, since we're talking about the wiki, I did want to sort of crowdsource one idea, which is if you, if any of you guys have seen the Kubernetes story of Fippy, um, if you've not seen it, do go look for PHIPPY Fippy uh, in Kubernetes. It's awesome. It's sort of a story explaining Kubernetes as a children's story. Um, and I've been kind of mulling doing something similar for NSM, but I need a character um, to in the character name for the protagonist. So, you know, if you guys have any interesting ideas, please please surface them at some point. Ed with his red cape. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be a little bit less self self indulgent than that, only slightly. Okay, well, down the list, uh, Hermes, messenger of the gods. Okay, so see, we have we have eight. Um, eight minutes left. Um, so, do we, uh, Pratik, Do you think that's enough time to uh, to discuss, or should we just jump straight towards um, our action planning for the next week? Um, I I don't have much, but I I can take maybe like two three minutes just to give a very high level of what I have. Uh, read so far and seeing how others are doing and get a feedback if if that's the right approach. Okay. So I went through the HTTP documentation and through the Kubernetes. So for the sidecar, what they're doing is there is a new concept which is beta in 1.9 Kubernetes and it's called mutating admission and control webhooks. So the idea is when you, when you submit a deployment on an app, you get Cube API server calls your API and you, you're running a server inside the cluster and you get all the details about the admission and then you can mute, you can patch, add a container, add a volume or add any other annotation. So that's how you can add us in the sidecar inside that pod. And that's what I have pasted a link in the uh, meeting minutes document about that also. So if folks think that's the right approach we should take, I can spend more time and uh, I'm, I'm working on that document to, to write that document in detail, like how we can go about that. It, it, it certainly sounds potentially quite promising. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't think any of us actually understand it well enough to know one way or the other, um, but, but it certainly sounds very interesting to me. So maybe getting a little more detail might be helpful. Uh, yeah. I've done some work with the uh, webhooks and I mean, in the newer version of Kubernetes, it is the way to go if you want to inject anything in the port. So, I mean, automatically, not the okay. injection. Okay, cool, cool. So would, would you be thinking that we could use that for injecting like an init container or something to, um, to set up the connections to various um, or, or a side or a sort of sidecar in the pod to talk to the NSM to set up and manage this stuff. Is that the thing you've been thinking, Pratik? Yeah, yeah that, exactly. Yeah, that, that sounds very promising to me. Um, how, how, does, how, does it solve, how does it sound to everyone else? I want to explore this approach a bit more. Like it, it definitely sounds promising. Yeah. Okay. 
as a next action item what i'll do is i'll try to create a document and what all what all components we need because when i was going through looks like the new call an api and that api is in is a endpoint which is encrypted you need certificates which api server knows about so all that kind of stuff is involved here so i'll try and um, get that part sorted out no, oh, thank you. Like I said, this sounds really cool. I mean, particularly, it'd be good to put uh, a reading list on the wiki, so we go and catch up. Uh, now that I see there's a wiki in place, I'll add it to the wiki. Gives us give us all a chance to read, and then figure out. Then we have a discussion. Yeah, I'll add it to the wiki. That's all I had to discuss from my side. Hey, Pratik, thanks for thanks for jumping in and taking a look at this. Uh, I think it sounds like everyone's pretty excited to see the results. So much appreciated. No worries. Thanks. Sorry, I was on another call, so got delayed. Oh, no worries. Thanks for thanks for coming in and uh, discussing with a uh, limited time. So. So we have uh, four more minutes. I want to make sure I got all the action items lined up properly. So top of the action items, sign up for the CI working group if you haven't, if you intend to go. Um, we have a distributed action item to invent a character for Ed. Um, so <laughs> awesome. So there's a show called Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Maybe we can take a reference from there. Um, let's see. We have um, we have Tom looking at some. Uh, we're looking at adding documentation to help people who are entering and getting started. Uh, we have Taylor who's going to add documentation for uh, CNCF and for and for cnf and the project that he's uh, that he's been working on uh we have pratik who is going to document uh the sidecar admission process uh, and so is there anyone that i have uh or anything that i have missed or any action items that we have not discussed that you want to add yourself to Um, I'm going to add one more as well. Oops, sorry. Um, going to add that if, if people who want to get involved uh, with the pod to NSM um, API, um, just as a reminder for for people who are looking at this, um, yeah, feel free to feel free to get involved if you have the if you have the time at this particular point as well, and. Okay, if we don't have anything else, um, our, then let's go ahead and, uh, and conclude and uh, we'll yield back uh, two minutes of time. So thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Frederick. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Hey Ed, is there anything we have to do in order to get the recording back or does it do it automatically? Sorry, you're on mute. So the, re the recording gets made automatically and then um, occasionally Prem and I get an email from the CNCF person because Prem's the one who made the arrangements and I'm the one who made the intro. Um, if you want, I can loop you into that thread and we can figure out a more, more sustainable way of approaching the problem. Um, I th wait, there's a YouTube channel they're putting on. And there's a link at the top of the meeting thing to the YouTube channel. So, okay. yep, yep. Anyway, cool. Um, I got to run to my next call. Talk to you later. Cool, take care, bye.